Uh, joining me today to discuss cybersecurity is Scott Christensen, uh, who's the cyber practice lead at Gray Matter Systems. Welcome, Scott. Welcome, Sid. Thank you. <laughs> uh, you know, industrial cybersecurity spans a very broad set of technologies and issues and, and services and things like that. To frame our discussion today, can you kind of explain where Gray Matter fits into that? What your focus is? Yeah, so a lot of our focus is on a couple of things. One is uh, how do we provide defense in depth to our customers, you know, multi layers of, of defense, but also kind of technology curation because uh, there's kind of quite a bit of white noise out there and a lot of different products, a lot of different solution sets, and not everything's a great fit. So a lot of times we work with our customers to try to decide what's the best technology and, and what's the best way to apply that technology. You know, uh, a lot of times when I talk to companies, IT cybersecurity is a priority for everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, they, everybody gets that. Mm -hmm. But you know, but on industries like oil and gas and maybe power, they are not. It, the issue is really OT cybersecurity. So, uh, or what can you do to help them, or what, what do you see them doing to improve their cybersecurity? Well, it's it's an inter interesting dynamic we've seen happen a lot of times in the fact that there's a heavy investment on the IT side of the house, uh, where a lot of the cost center is, but where the revenue generation is, that we don't seem to focus as much on protecting the actual assets that you know generate our, our revenue. So what we're starting to see now is people realizing that and there's been a transition to kind of develop maturity onto the OT side of the house. You know, uh, a few years ago, uh, the term OT wasn't even a, a coin phrase. And so now we're starting to see much more investment and a lot more maturity in the technologies that are being applied uh, onto the production side of the house. You know, uh, in, in the OT world, we're seeing a lot of intelligence and security occurring at the edge now. Mm -hmm. You know, what is... Uh, gray matter doing with respect to that you know what tools are you using or what are you doing so a lot of a lot of what we've seen happen is uh Cybersecurity is starting to move away from being a disabler, I don't allow you to do things, to enabling you to do it in a risk adverse way. So a lot of things we're doing is allowing them to get the analytics, they need the data, they need that valuable efficiencies they're being able to pull out, but do it in a secure way, you know, making sure that we're transmitting that data in the right way, we're following good practices, and really enabling a lot more of the digital transformation we're seeing our customers go through. Uh, what are you seeing as the major threats to companies today in the OT world? I think the, 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 the a couple it's of one big... of my key areas of research. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry for interrupting you. No, I know, I know your speech really well, yeah. Uh, uh, though, uh, I think there's a couple of things. One, we're seeing ransomware really both sides of the house. It's no longer an OT problem or IT problem. It's, it's just across the board. It really doesn't care what it's encrypting. It just wants to encrypt everything, right? So we're seeing a prevalence of that type of thing really permeating across the board. And then the other thing we're starting to see is a lot more of internal unintentional internal threat actors thing. You know, people not following best practices, you know, shared passwords. Uh, I always make a speech about the sticky note where everyone has on the con con command <laughs> console, that type of thing. So we're starting to see uh, a lot of those kind of things, the, the basic, you know, hygiene things, we're starting to see those get addressed more and more in the, in the, in the industry. Uh, yeah, I, I identify very much with the sticky paper. A lot of people don't believe that's true, but it really uh, is absolutely. true. Absolutely. <laughs> it's the first thing we do on a risk assessment is look at the whiteboards and look for sticky notes because it's the most common way we see exposures happen, right? Is, uh, oh, it's easy that way. And, well, that's not the best way. <laughs> uh, you know, we cover things in, in, uh, strategy-wise from a people process and technology issues. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what... You deal with a lot of companies, and I know you have to deal with those issues. So how do you do that, or what, what is your perspective on people, process, and technologies? How do they align, and what can you do to help them with that? Yeah, I think a lot of times we jump to the technology, looking for the mousetrap that fixes all the problems. And I think a lot of times we skip over the people in the process. Are we following good practices? Do I people know why we do security? It's amazing how often we get into a conversation, and they just don't know why that sticky note's not a good thing. You know, and once you say, <laughs> well, that's a big exposure point, or you see things like dual NIT cards, right? dual home devices. These are, these are things that, you know, are done out of convenience. And we start moving away from what's convenient to what's secure and still enabling that to happen. So having that conversation on the people in the process is kind of a high value with the customers a lot of times. How do I engage? You know, what are the standards I want to apply to? That's the other part we look at. A lot of times customers are just lost with all the noise. Do I go with NIST? Do I go with IEC? Do I go with ISO? And a lot of times just trying to find out what is the best standard to apply to my my industry, and then how do I apply it and how do I engage in a maturity model that allows me to kind of grow my cybersecurity program? You know, uh, one thing we see a lot today uh, is in the digital transformation side where cybersecurity has become kind of a disabler. It's unfortunately <laughs> because yeah. there are programs that aren't being done 
that could be done, there should be done, mm -hmm. because they're afraid of cybersecurity. And you know, we tend to say, you know, don't look at it that way. You can look at it from the other side and talk about it enabler. Exactly. You know, how, does that kind of your philosophy, or how can you very tell us what you're doing relative to that? Yeah, very much so. We we see it as a, a kind of hand in hand. The digital transformation and the enablement really need to go together. They're so used to security telling them, no, not in my infrastructure, not in my house, not not to, not today. Uh, whereas we come in and say, well, what if we did it this way? What if we put the right controls in place? What if we followed the right pro? Well, that makes sense. Maybe I can do this. You know, it's, it's not as much we find that the security person doesn't want to enable things. It's more of no one's shown them there's a practical way to do a lot of it. Remote access being one of the ones, you know, segmentation. There's ways to do these things that are much more practical on the OT side of the house than they would be, you know, somewhere else. So showing them and kind of guiding them that we do things a little differently, you know, like patching. It's always the, the, always the big catch, right? I have all these unpatched systems. How do I approach it? Well, there's a way to put it. If I put compensating controls, I can, you know, I can, you know, I can mitigate the risk of an unpatched system, but I just have to show you how and give you the guidance. To, and that's a lot of times what we're seeing is once we've given that guidance, we find that security becomes much more uh, collaborative with the digital transformation than to be, being that roadblock that people see them as. Oh, it's been a real pleasure talking to you, Scott. Thank you, Sid. Uh, today we've been speaking with Scott Christensen from Gray Matter Systems. Thank you for watching.